I can see. All right. All right. Good. So today we are going to be talking about uh, SI scholarship and other scholarships, not only SI, the university scholarship. Um, first of all, I want to say thank you for joining and then, you know, for you guys who have trusted us at Edu Career Network to have committed yourself in one way, uh, that means a lot because, you know, to be sincere with you, you've not, we've not met physically. And um, from my experience, I know people have missed opportunities because they are trying to uh, make sure that they don't fall in the hand of uh, scammers and stuff like that. But from uh, experience, um, sometimes you need to give it a try. So what you guys have done, um, I really appreciate you for that. And by the grace of God, I strongly believe that next year, God will perfect everything concerning your application. Uh, the secret, one thing I wanted to know is this. Uh, it's not being religious, but by the grace of God, we still commit <laughs> all the applications, everything we are doing at Edu Career Network. God is first, like we commit, we fast because of application, not our own application, but application, those that, um, uh, that are connected to us submitted the application. Sorry, um, my co-hosts, Sister Toby, I've made you co-host. If you can help me admit okay. people, because I won't be able to do that, please. No problems. Thank you, thank you. So, um, I'm hoping there's a lady on our platform. She is studying presently in uh, Gothenburg. Now she got a job and now see what she sent to me right now as I'm talking to you. She's applying for a work permit and they've given her a work permit until for one year until December 2022. That is fantastic. All right. Uh, if you if you don't if you're not aware of this uh, work permit, I'm talking to you guys because you are in house. Um, this work permit will eliminate your uh, student status. So you know when you are coming in now, you have to pay about some of you fifty thousand, like uh, ten thousand euros or something like that that cancels whatever tuition that you have to pay because you have a work permit, not student permit anymore. So it's an advantage on its own. And she always call, ask for ideas and all those things. So let's just leave that. In case you have question relating to that, we can talk about it later. Like I said, this is an in-house. It is an in-house. You can ask questions at any time. So let's quickly rush through the SI scholarship. There are two types of scholarship when it comes to Sweden, the main scholarship. There are other small, small scholarship like grants and all, but the main one is uh, the government scholarship and the university's scholarship. The SI scholarship, they have different scholarship, but this is the main one for uh, if you are coming from developing countries like Nigeria, Ghana, you know. So, uh, and it is called SI scholarship for global professionals. As we can see, it, the aim is to develop future leaders. So let's just leave that for now. And as you can see there, to contribute to the United Nations 2030 agenda. So which means that if you are studying in a particular field, in a particular area, you might have uh, a better advantage of being uh, selected for the scholarship. Uh, in the next slide, I will try to show you some of the uh, agenda. Number one goal 
2030 goal or agenda for sustainable development, United Nations agenda is uh, that there should be no poverty. Okay, no poverty. So are you helping me with that acceptance? Because I could see this. Um, I'm, now, I'm now moving to my laptop. You still have to let me in from let my me, laptop. Let me admit them then, no problem. Thank you. All right. So um, then the second one is zero hunger. So if you're doing something, if your program is related to this, then you have higher chances of being selected, good health and well-being. This is another, uh, but we have about 17 of them. If, if I should click this link, which I will not do now, it will take me to, uh, okay, let me see. I think I have it. Do, let me quickly show you. Or you can check that later because of time. But we have all these topics. Let's quickly show it because, like I said, it's uh, in house. So, can you see my screen still, right? Hello? Can you see my screen? Let me just be sure. Yes, yes, oh. yes, we can. Oh, oh, good, good. So, these are the agenda, this, the, the odd topic, you see, number five goal is gender equality, clean water, sanitation, industrial, uh, decent work, sustainable cities and communities, you see, uh, life on land. So all these topics, if you are writing or if, you, if your topic is within that area, I think you have a better chance of being selected. Okay, so now what do you get when uh, you are a recipient of the SI scholarship? Number one, you have full tuition that will be covered by the Swedish government. If your tuition is 100,000 Swedish crowns, which is about 10,000 euros, that will be paid directly to your university once you get the scholarship. And on top of that, you have a monthly payment of 10,000 krono, which is like 10, 1,000 euros per month, you know? And I think that should be enough for you to pay your rent, to buy books and whatever you want to. It's just for living expenses. And of course you have insurance against illness or accident. And then you will also, be member of SI Network for Future Global Leaders. Uh, this is just a network where, you know, occasionally they have meetings, you meet occasionally, and then you share ideas. It's just a network to help you develop within Sweden. And after your scholarship, um, you also join a network, alumni network, SI alumni network. And then, of course, if you are from certain countries, you will also have a travel grant of 15,000 Swedish crowns. And that is more than enough for you to buy your travel ticket. You see, this scholarship is fantastic if one is able to get it. It's just as if you are just picking your bag and everything is being paid for. All right. But it's not easy to get it. I think one out of 200 or thereabout gets this scholarship. All right. But it's good to let you know. Um, eligible countries for SI scholarship. Um, as you can see, the list there. If you are a citizen of any of these countries here, you are eligible for this scholarship. Nigeria is listed. Most of us are from Nigeria, Ghana, uh, Ethiopia, and all. Okay. Now, how do you make the application? What are the process? This is these are the steps. Just five of them. Uh, the first one is you must apply for a master's program. SI scholarship is not for undergraduate. It's for a postgraduate for master student, and then. 
at least every one of you have applied to a master's program. Um, we didn't send this uh, meeting to undergraduate students because it's not for them. We have quite a number of people that have applied for undergraduate. So you must have applied. I've, you know, people have contacted us before. Okay, I want to apply for the scholarship. No, you must have applied, pay the application fee. And then the second step is after the admission closes, which is in uh, Feb uh, January 17, then the deadline to send all the documents is the end of January. So after that, by February 10, application for this scholarship will be open. So application is not open yet. It will open 10th of February, 2022. And then it's just for few days, or let me say few weeks, two weeks or thereabout, from the 10th to 28th of February. But I will recommend that you visit their website, www.si.se and then read about global professional i mean si scholarship for global professionals and you get details of everything everything i'm showing you now all right so i will not take much of your time because most of you probably you're using your data and stuff like that so but in case you have question afterwards, I can try to answer those ones. So these are just the steps. And then you get the not notification if you are a uh, notification for your admission. So every application we are making now, some of you probably you have, you have, I mean, your application have been uh, evaluated to be qualified. Okay, why some of you, probably because of holiday, because you didn't send your transcript in time, it's not, they are not yet evaluated, okay? But once you get admitted, uh, the notification will be sent out in April. And then after that, you get a final announcement uh, for the scholarship in April, between April 8th to 28 so you know if you have scholarship or not now uh, i always recommend that because you get a notification on the 7th of april all right for the admission and you wouldn't know if you get scholarship or not whether it is this government scholarship, which is the SI scholarship, or the school scholarship. You wouldn't know if you get a scholarship or not, okay? So my recommendation is before you pay your tuition, because definitely you have to pay tuition, uh, you wait until the notification is out, the announcement is out by the end of the month, April 28th. And then if you get it, if you don't get it, then you can plan to pay your scholarship. And I say again, don't focus your life on the scholarship because to be sincere with you, scholarship is not guaranteed. It's just, um, it's not a crime to try it, okay? But it's not, it's not like it's guaranteed, but of course, especially if your program is, um, if your program is kind of, popular like business yeah, i mean economics you know but if you if your program is like let's say health or something related to sustainable development then probably you have a better chances also so now how do you make the application you apply first of all like i said earlier uh which you guys uh, which we have done if you don't have access to your application portal, after this meeting, please send message to Ross so you can get your details. Because I think some of you didn't even bother. Uh, we try to send the details, but in case you don't have it, I was speaking with somebody and say, well, I've never logged in to check. So that's not how it works at EduCarrier Network you have access to the portal yourself. You can check, you can, you know, 
you are you 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 are involved in the process not like we are not like agents that oh bring your document no it doesn't work that way you have to know the courses chosen for you and all those things so that is done and then as you can see there you need to state your application number in the application when you are making your application for the scholarship there is an application number that you have you have to specify it, okay? So now you need to submit the required document digitally through online application portal. Um, this portal will not be open until the February 10th, when, you know, uh, once you go to their website, www.si.se, you get the form there. And in case you, you're struggling getting the form, you can always send message to us on WhatsApp. Um, we only guide you, like we told you in this process, we can't apply for you. And that's one of the reasons why we are doing this now. All right. And of course there will be screening during the process, like screening all the application after you have made the application. And um, by 7th of April, like I said earlier, you will receive your notification of selection from university admissions. And SI will receive the admission result as well, including your personal information directly. So they will also get information about uh, you being admitted <laughs> because if you are not admitted, then of course, even if you are more than qualified for the scholarship, you, you won't get anything, all right? So you need to, to be aware of that, all right? Uh, and it's written the only admitted applicants to one of the eligible master's program, including those who are conditionally admitted will be considered further for an SI scholarship, okay? So just for your information, now, the stage five, which is the announcement that will be on the 28th of April, okay? They will announce all the recipients. If you have won the scholarship, you get the information that you've got, gotten the scholarship. I'm trying to just be fast because I know you might have some questions, so we don't have to take much of your time. All right, now in the process, these are the things that you need to take note of. You need to be aware of the requirements, like a work environment, I mean, work experience, work experience. Um, to be eligible for this scholarship, you need to have at least 3,000 hours of work experience before 10th of February. So there's a way this is calculated. If you check the website, you see, the information of how it's been calculated, but you need to be aware of it. So if you have not been, if you don't have a work experience, this scholarship is not for you, okay? Now, um, for applicants from Bangladesh or all the countries you can see on the screen, Gambia, Ghana, Ghana Nigeria is also included. If you are, if you have, um, if your program is within sustainable developments, then you, you will be prioritized, okay? You will probably get the scholarship. And um, here are the two examples stated on their website in case you wanna calculate your employment hours, like oh, uh, how many hours, maybe you work one year, or you did some part-time job or something like that. So this is just a scenario how to do the calculation. Probably currently, if you are employed full-time and you are working 40 hours per week for 50 weeks in a year, that's in a calendar year. And then you've previously worked part-time as freelance for 12 hours per week. So you just do the calculation 40 hours times 50 weeks, which is the one year calendar. And that will be equivalent to 2,000 hours uh, work experience. So, and then of course the part-time that you did 
that would be about 1,000, which means that uh, you are qualified to apply for this uh, scholarship. Uh, you must also be able to provide certification for these three hours work experience. Uh, this form, you will find it on the website. There's a form that you need to fill. Everything is on, the, on their website, okay? And of course, apart from this work experience, you need a leadership experience. And that, uh, of course, you can, um, you, you can show evidence of your leadership experience through probably maybe you've, you've worked with an NGO, you've done some voluntary work, whatever leadership capacity that you have, you can always show this. Uh, the leadership experience has no requirement regarding a minimum number of hours. However, priority will be given to applicants with, with demonstrated strong and relevant leadership experience from employment, okay? So it would have been good if you have a leadership experience from a work, from a workplace. Otherwise, if you don't have that, uh, if you have leadership experience, maybe it could be some other work, church, well, you know, whatever leadership experience that you have. So uh, another requirement, apart from the leadership experience, don't forget the first one that we listed is the work uh, experience. The second one is the leadership experience. And now you need to also have uh, your curriculum vitae, okay? They have the format as well on their website. Then the, the other one is the letter of reference. There is a form on their website. There is a form that you fill. A letter of reference must be signed by the referees. And then they must also stamp it. Don't make the mistake of your ref, referee or reference or whatever not stamping this form. It's very important, okay? Uh, you can download the form on their website and then send to fill the form, send to your referee to stamp it and sign it, and then you upload it on the portal. Uh, proof of work and leadership experience. Uh, like I said, this is just a repetition. You need to download the form on the website, and then you type it, you print it out, you sign it, you stamp it, and you upload it again. This is just the summary of what they are trying to say here. And then, of course, somebody was asking me during the admission process, why is my international passport needed? Unfortunately, in Sweden, um, they verify your international, I mean, your identity by, via your international passport. Okay, so if you don't have, of course, you can't even apply for admission if you don't have international passport. So this is also important for you to know that you will upload that. So um, in summary, in summary, this, if a complete application consists of this list, number one, the CV, there is a form online to download, Number two, letter of reference. You have this form as well online to download, just a format. Then you need to have a valid and a complete proof of work and leadership experience. You also have a form online to fill, okay? A copy of your international passport or national ID, but for Nigerians or Africans, it's mainly international passport. And lastly, motivation. Uh, this one, you don't have to upload it just as we are doing for this admission right now that you write it on, uh, on Word document. This one will be on the portal. You just have to type it. But of course, uh, my recommendation is to 
type everything or try to work on it now and just paste it when the application is open, okay? So note that your application will be disqualified if any of the above is missing. If you want further information about everything I've said, you can go to www.si.se. You get information about scholarship for global professionals. All right. So that's all about SI scholarship. And now um, I want to tell you about the school scholarships. This one is much more easier to get compared to the SI scholarship, okay? So you need to be aware that individual universities have their own scholarships, okay? Um, if you are admitted to Gothenburg, so in this case, I will use Gothenburg as an example, okay? Most of us, we have our applications already submitted and we have prioritized them. Most schools will want you to make them the first choice before you can apply for scholarship. Okay, I don't know if you got my point. If you want to get, if you want to apply to uh, Gothenburg, University of Gothenburg for scholarship, that means that you must have chosen them as your first choice. Okay. Okay. So that's one thing you need to know. So if you want to apply for this uh, school scholarship now, I will try to navigate you through. Um, I'll try to navigate you through the website, uh, SI, um, I mean, sorry. I will navigate you through the website now. Hold on, this is disturbing me. But GU.SC, I think. Can you guys see my screen? If you can see my screen, let me know. Yes. Oh. Yes. Oh, okay. thank you. Thank you. So now you need to go to the website. And of course, when you are on their website, I'm trying to see what I can do to hide this. Just put it down here. So you need to visit their website. And then, of course, you see international website here. Yeah? Sometimes it could be written English here, yeah? just convert it to English. And then you need to go to study hmm? and move to, you see, even myself, because I can't know where the scholarship for all the university is. Uh, but in most cases, they have it under tuition. You see, scholarship for fee paying students. So if I click this now, I will see scholarship for fee paying students. Okay, so they have scholarship provided by the university, you see. ASL Handler you know, uh, Scholarship, that's one of the scholarship. And then they have some other scholarship as well. So on, on this page, if I'm a student and I have chosen Gothenburg as my first choice, I'll be able to read about this scholarship. You can see now they still have SI scholarship here. So if you click here, that will lead you to uh, SI scholarship, the one we just discussed. But our focus now is the university scholarship. This is one of the scholarships. So if I should click here now, I'll be able to read about the requirement. You see, to be eligible for this, you are considered to be a fee-paying student. 
Number one, you have applied to a full-time master's or bachelor program for, okay, or bachelor program. This bachelor program is only for software engineering program and international relation program. Wow. I'm just seeing this even. So that means some of my applicants, I have quite a number of students who have applied for undergraduate. And um, I didn't even know that some schools have scholarship for undergraduates if you are studying international relations in that school. So I will try to tell them now, I'll send this information across to those that have chosen Gutenberg or try to inform them that the scholarship in case you, you want to do undergraduate in software engineering program. But if you, have, if you have applied to master's, uh, okay, okay, sorry. I think this scholarship is mainly for those that have studied this program or that, or that, that will be studying this program, okay? Yeah, it's mainly for them. They might have some other scholarship for Philippine student. You see, this is another one. Scholarship for students at the School of Business, Economics, and Law. All right? So this is the Richard C. Mass whatever Memorial Foundation. <laughs> Okay, so these are the Volvo Group scholarship. So they have, there are a lot of other scholarships, but how do you find this scholarship? Okay, this is how to find this scholarship. You go to the website, and then if you click on tuition, then you'll be able to see that. Most times, if you are unable to see that, you can also click on search button. Yeah, every website has a search button. Then you type scholarship. If you type scholarship here, yeah, then you'll be able to, that, this one will take me to that page again. See? So this is just an example. Uh, let me try to look at which other university. Can somebody tell me your, the name of your first choice, the university, anyone, anyone online? That's him, oh. Gothenburg. <laughs> Gothenburg? Yeah, it was the first uh, But one. we've checked Gothenburg. We want to check another university. At Don't. least you, if you have chosen Gothenburg as your first choice, you know where to go Don't now. Do to yeah. 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 Oops. Uppsala. Uppsala. Okay. Okay. So if we Uppsala. type Uppsala now. You see, Uppsala is top rank university. Hmm? It's well recognized worldwide. So um, now I'm on that page. That's the challenge. How do I change this to English? You have to look for that now. In most cases, it's always at the top right corner, but uh, bibliotech. Uh, let me open the home page again. Are you serious? They should have this page in English. Hmm. No, 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 no. You can't. Can you, can you see your hair? That place, yeah. <laughs> Imagine. So these are the, <laughs> so this is the thing you need to know. You need to translate. Don't let Google translate it for you. Like some of you have said it. It's not a good one. It's good to locate where it is on the website so that you get the right information. All right. So now we are on that page. We can either use here to search scholarship, or like I said, uh, if I should click on uh, admission, and then I go here on that tuition in most cases, um, master studies, yes. Housing, financing, it should be on that here.
see if I should click tuition, maybe who is required to pay fee refund tuition. The easiest way is to search it. Mm -hmm. Oh, I saw something. Sorry, you know, I can't know where it, information for. No, no. Of course, they have scholarship. I'm very sure every school has it. It's better to search. That's the best thing. School leadership, you see. Now, if we go to that page now, we should have something. Available scholarship. Scholarship for prospective student. So if I should now each year, Uppsala University awards a number of scholarship to fee paying international students who are applying to master's or bachelor program. If I should click here now, um, Uppsala University scholarship for prospective student, they have the application period is from 18th of January to 4th of February. So if you have chosen it, you need to be aware of this time. And in most cases, what is needed is just a motivation, which is similar to the one you have written for your admission. But then you need to just try to adjust it, um, you know, just try to amend it to suit the scholarship, all right? And if you have done that, we can, we can also help you to read it but it's good for you to navigate the website as i'm sh as i'm showing you now you see they have if you are from uganda they have a specific scholarship for ghana south africa tunisia uganda you see this is the scholarship and then scholarship open to citizens of country outside the eu okay this one is mainly for everyone, where, whichever country you are coming from, global scholarship, see? So these are, this is how to navigate through this university scholarship. And um, let's check another school. And um, you need to be aware that some of these schools, what's the time now? Some of the school will give 50%, some of them will give 25%. So there is no crime in applying for this scholarship. If we should check, uh, oh, ha, ha. this is about SI. I might have to send this one to you. If you are applying for SI scholarship, not all the programs are qualified for SI scholarship. So this is the list of programs that are qualified for SI scholarship, okay? So if your program is not in this list, then you, you can't apply for scholarship, for SI scholarship, brother. So you need to be aware of that. I can send this later to, to, to you guys. Um, if you check another school, I think, let's see du.sc, this is Dalana University. DU.SC. This is Dalana in English. They also have their scholarship, but I think that's enough. That's enough. Like if you search here again, I can see scholarship. Scholarship for masters. So they have quite number of scholarship as well.
So as we can see, scholarship for new student. A tuition waiver is only available for a master's degree program, which is offered in the campus. And then uh, for them, their own application is January 1st to March 25. So you have a you know, different application period. That's why I would recommend if we have finalized your selection and you've, you know that, oh, this is my first choice, go to the website, do exactly what I'm doing now to read about the scholarship and what is necessary to do, okay? So this is the application process. You can, it's not something, some of the schools will require you to send a video. This is just the application process. They have an online application form and then you submit your CV and uh, and then uh, you do a video where you explain why you should be you should receive the scholarship. Some people will run away from this one because they don't want to do the video. So if you don't want to do video, you can make another school your first choice. Uh, if we check MDH, for example, MDH, this is the school where I graduated from. Uh, and this school, I think this year they might award more scholarship because um, the government just gave them some grants for more research. I mean, this year, because it was more or less like a technical school before, but now it's full university. They just got the license. So it's most likely that they have more, they give, they award more scholarship. All right. So Anyways, I think that's that's it. That's it for for today. Do you guys have any question? Any question? Or mute yourself and ask your question, please. Okay, so Mr. Dan, I wanted to ask about the um, this uh, leadership experience. Mm -hmm. That's the SI scholarship. Okay. You know, I wasn't clear. Is it that the leadership experience is going to be um, also in that you must have experience in civil society as well as your employment area, or one of them, or both? Um. Uh, like um, we read, I think I read something like that. There is no specific requirement for leadership experience. You don't, there's no, it's not specified. But um, based on what I read, uh, priority will be given to those that have leadership experience from their employment. Okay. okay yeah, but there's no requirement. But if you have, leadership experience from your work, then priority will be given to you. Okay, thank yeah. you. Yeah, mm. you're welcome. Any other, you're just unmute yourself, free, free, free okay? <laughs> you guys, just feel free to ask questions. It could be okay, uh, not necessarily evening. scholarship, any question you want to ask, yeah. Okay, good evening, Mr. Dan. Good evening, sir. Yeah, I'll listen to you carefully. I have just two questions. Mm -hmm. uh, the first one is on, on the SI scholarship. Uh, it's my wife that's actually applying for admission, like you are aware. We can hear you, sir. Uh, so, and then from, where, from what I gather, if she's able to get us stamped. But the challenge I'm having is... Um, sorry, so you either need to mute... Um, I think you're using two uh, devices. Yes, you need to mute uh, Madam's device or I think you know, so both of you can same device if not echoing or you separate yourself or something you will not separate uh, I've asked you, that, <laughs> maybe we have separated ourselves 
Okay, good. Carry on going now. Okay. Um, the question I was trying to ask mm -hmm. is, what uh, are chances when you have um, uh, when you have experience with an NGO like that, mm -hmm. and also um, you talk about getting your document stamp. Assuming you don't want people to know that you are planning to go abroad. <laughs> <laughs> because from what I can see now, it means that our boss needs to sign and stamp those documents. So I have a little challenge with that. The yeah. second one, we were just uh, during the presentation, you talk about uh, prospective students going back to use their ID to at least once in a while log into the to the SI admission platform. Not uh, SI. I, Not SI. I was, is it? Uh, no, reverse uh, admission, sorry. Yes, okay. Reverse admission platform. So I tried it now why in the course of the uh, mm -hmm. presentation, I discovered that one of the school actually replied that she's supposed to have some additional degree and all that. I think that's the um, um, Lund University. Is it Lund? You know the pronunciation very well. Lund, yeah. Mm -hmm. Yes. So I want to find out what... Um, Those, uh, everything uh, that has to do with, with, with I think that that has been settled. If they said you need whatever, we have okay. uploaded those ones. The, from okay. your side, the main thing is the transcript. Okay. Yeah. Okay. So that's not okay. a challenge. Yeah. Okay. And finally, the last time you that, tried that, to. Uh, that one, okay. like every, uh, my team, we try to check all the application to see what okay. is going on, the status and everything. So if there's any message on that portal, then it should have been handled. Okay. And if there's any need for, if we need anything right. uh, that you have to provide, we, we let you know. But uh, okay. the transcript, you have to work on it uh, to, be, to, be, to uh, be sure that it's been sent by your university. Yes, I think they've confirmed that one from that mail that, that no, no, they've confirmed to them just as the reply. They've confirmed just the, the university. university. Yeah, not the NC. I okay. mean, the one year. Yeah. The NC. So, yes, okay. that's the challenge. Right, if, we may if, have to send them. If you are sending transcripts by post, it's a it's a big challenge. To be sincere with you, it's it might take okay. time, and I'm I'm afraid about it actually. I will recommend if you can persuade your school to send it via email, because you can imagine this is a digital world. If they are sending it via posts or whatever, uh, you, it will take like weeks. And then after arriving, you can imagine the postman will deliver it. They will put it somewhere and somebody will you know, open the envelope and then still scan it. And see, the process is really, really, a long one, so. But so we try and see what we can do with that. Unfortunately, the, the state government in the state they are trying to upgrade that uh, institution to university. So mm -hmm. a lot All of right. So let, let's. You can. You can we'll always. Talk about that later, yes, sir. please. Yeah. Thank you, sir. Any other question yes. from anyone? Sorry, but before before he goes, he asked you about two other questions. Mm -hmm. Um, something about you know if they needed to stamp. And okay. The, okay. About the experience, just okay. so we can have all the answers. Okay. So for that aspect, um, there's nothing I can do about it because this is something that is mandatory. Okay. So this is on your side, or you don't want people to know or something. So I don't know how you will fix it. And it's not in my capacity to say, hey, don't put because this is the requirement. Um, people have ignored some of these little, little requirements before, and that uh, affected their application. So I don't know how you, if you don't want people to know or something, maybe, I don't know, you know best. It's your workplace or it's the people you know. Probably you need to look for somebody you trust that will do the stamping for you or something. Or I don't know, actually. <laughs> All right, but it's it's something very important. You need to stamp the form. 
All right, thank you. I will, will communicate further on that. Yeah, okay. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Any other question? It could be something about what you have to bring. <laughs> because by the grace of God, you will be given. Hello, sir. I don't know if I'm, uh, if you yes. can hear me we can well. Hear. We can yes. Yes. Yes, uh, my name is Ruth from Uganda. Mm -hmm. And uh, I just have a question. I kind of put it in a chat and uh, I thought maybe I could unmute myself and ask it, uh, ask it on Better. time. Mm -hmm. uh, yes, um, so my question is, after having your school sent through your transcript, how long does it take to get notification that it has been received? Because um, I'm kind of uh, getting uh, kind of you're worried, you know, and you know it takes uh, some. I have to go to the school myself. Have to go physically since it's been some time since I finished, and uh, uh, it kind of takes me like you know a long time to reach there, and then I have to come back. Mm -hmm. So I'm just wondering how long it can take for uh, the uh, the email we sent to uh, the school had to send my transcript to. to to get to to give notification that it has been received. Mm. Um, usually, um, it depends on the medium. If they are sending it via email within yes, a few days, like one week, it should have been updated on your portal. There is a way you see uh, if your transcript arrived or not. I'm just going to see if I can look for an application here and quickly try to show you where to, because some of you don't know where to check these things. Um, yes, most, most possibly. Yeah. Um, let me quickly. Mm -hmm. I can share my screen now too. Um, so I think, can you help me admit? I think some people are, is there anyone in the waiting room? No, no, there's no one in the lobby. All right. All right. So if you look at this, this is an application portal for an applicant. Um, these are the courses chosen. And now already this has this application is being evaluated and she's qualified in this one because it's already been evaluated. This okay. one in progress means that they have not evaluated it yet. Okay. Yeah, because um, each school have their admission committees. They yes. check, they have access to the portal as well. Just to, this is just a general check. Like, okay, let's see, is this person qualified. If I should check this further information now, you will see uh, qualified means that you meet the entry requirement for this course of program. This does not mean that you have been offered a place. But of course, in most cases, if you have qualified, then you are at the verge of being admitted anyways. Okay. Yeah. Except if you have been placed in reserve. Okay. So in this portal now, if I should click this page and go to document, you will see these are the documents uploaded. All right, these oh. are the ones that you have to upload. But this one means that the transcript has arrived. Okay, I see. Yeah, so it was received on the 3rd of November. They usually write received by posts, but okay. um, it could be by via email or by via posts. So it means okay. it has arrived. All right. I so understand. Okay. That's on that one. Okay. Thank you so much, sir. No problem. Um, any other question before we round up for today? Okay. So um, for, for people that already have um, sort of some courses ranked, 
let's use the example of, of the application that you just viewed with us now, uh -huh. right? I see that the person's maybe fourth option is, you know, what is showing that this person is qualified for. There's like three other applications that are in progress. Question mm -hmm. is by the by the 15th of January or 17th of January when applications close, mm -hmm. will all these um, schools have been um, evaluated? If not, then do you do you then you know maybe come back to the drawing board to say okay you know what since I am qualified for maybe this one, maybe just put my best foot forward and use this one as like my first choice, then you know the remaining three that you know uh, uh, because okay. because you know that there's also that thing about I think February something to something where people can still submit documents yeah. or something mm -hmm. like that. Mm -hmm. But you know you can't do anything about applications anymore. So okay. just ask. All right. Good. It's a very good question. Thank you very much. So um, just to summarize the question again, the application I showed earlier, maybe I can show it again. I'm just being skeptical because of the information of the applicant. So. Um, where is it again? So now the question is, um, this application now, as we can see, some of them, they are still in progress, meaning that they've not evaluated the application yet, okay? However, the fourth one is being evaluated and is qualified. She's asking if, her venture, um, I mean, if it's advisable to make this one, which is your fourth choice, to be the first choice instead. Uh, if per venture this uh, one, two, three is not evaluated until the deadline has passed. Yeah, it has happened before that, um, this uh, probably some of the programs are not evaluated yet. I uh, will also recommend, it depends. It depends if you are applying for scholarship or not. So my recommendation is if by, let's say a few days to the deadline, those first choice or second choice or thereabout, they are not evaluated. The recommendation is to make that one that has been qualified your, your priority, like the first choice because at least you know that this one I'm already qualified and um, I'm, I'm most likely uh, get admitted to that program. And so it's, it's recommended that you make them uh, the first choice. Yeah. And because once the deadline has passed, you can make changes to your application. Like if we use this application, for example, you, you can see, you can still change your application. If I should click here, I can reprioritize this, like make this number two or number one. So once deadline has passed, which is January 17, you won't see this icon anymore, okay? So that's why I kept on pushing for the transcript, all right? If I should open some application now, you will see that there's nothing like in progress at all. Reason could be probably the transcript came late or the application came late or something, but they will still evaluate it definitely. But what we try to do is we make sure that every document is uploaded, okay? And once before deadline, because if the deadline has passed, you can't submit any documents. You can't do anything anymore. You have to wait until the subsequent year, which is October, 2022. So that's why it's good. Like this application now, we know now that everything is complete with this application. For me, I put these ones now, if, if I should check, uh, we have a data where we have all, I mean, just the progress. This particular applicant now, we've already placed, uh, 
the applicant in a section that oh, this one is just at the verge of being admitted. And that's why you see us sending reminder to those of you that have not <laughs> probably sent your transcript or something is missing so that everything will be uploaded before the deadline, okay? Don't forget the deadline to apply for program is 17, but deadline to receive document is the end of January, I think 1st of February. So just get that. So I don't know if I'm able to, if that is clear. Yes, it is. It is. No, the, the person that asked the question, is it clear? No, it's clear, but, but I always, you know me, I, I always- mm, Yeah, have... I ask your question, no problem. So, mm. so um, when you're qualified for, for is, is there like a, like a standard bandwidth? Um, so for example, on some applications you see um, qualified, like, um, how do you say now? You see like, you know, um, maybe 120 of a maximum of 232 or something like that, right? Is there a, is there like a- Oh, well, can you repeat that? I, I, I missed something there. Hmm? I said, if you, if you check the application, mm -hmm. at least to my mind, um, um, so when you click on the qualified one, mm -hmm. you would also see sort of like a, a band mm -hmm. that will say, you know- Out of 280, out something, of 280 180. Yeah, okay. 182, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. So my question is, is there a standard band you know, so in case you wanted to rank again, right? If you're qualified, let's assume that you, I mean, obviously you put in four applications, but out of the four applications, maybe you have like maybe three qualified before the date. And then, you know, when you brainstorm to say, okay, okay you know, put this as number one, put this as number two. And um, yeah, my, I, I got your point. Uh, some of you might not even get what the question, I, I believe. Because if you are not, you are talking from experience right now, um, okay? So, because your own application, if I remember, I think it's, it has been evaluated. So, it's easier for you to understand what, I'm, what we are saying. But what she's saying is, if the application is qualified and then it's been ranked like, oh, um, you have maybe out of 20, 22, your ranking is, I mean, your rating is like 15 or something. So I, you can look at those rating to just prioritize it. But I don't think that matters because once you are qualified, then you shouldn't bother yourself that much. Okay. Mm, of course, you can also prioritize based on your ranking. Let's say the first one says, different schools with different rating. Some of them we say out of one 200 and something, you have 180 uh, something. So 180 means 180, uh, a bachelor degree. That means you have 180 credits. Okay. So just to get that. Any other question? Yes, please. Hmm? Yes. Yes, yes. Go ahead. Hello. Go ahead. Can you help me, please? We can. Okay. Uh, still on my transcript. Okay. Like my college of education, mm -hmm. they don't have a portal, mm -hmm. but there's a dedicated email address, which is coben 101 at yale.com. I don't uh, know if they send through that address. Maybe. Um, can you hear me? Yeah, I can hear you. Okay. I think I've answered that before. If you are sending it via any private email, that will not be accepted, unfortunately. It's Coben. That's, it's from the school. That's a school. I, I know, but it's yahoo.com. If, if yeah. it's yeah. Yahoo, Gmail, okay. it will not be. It has to be um, probably something university or, you know, dot com dot edu or something like that okay. not yeah exactly okay. university okay. portal yeah okay wow Thank you. it's so so sorry about that unfortunately 
Yeah, Thank I understand you. your. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Sorry to sorry to be the maybe spanner in the wheel here. My apologies. Um, but if I assume um about a lot of us are having issues with transcripts. Mm. And if for some for some reason, you know, we're unable to to meet up with the transcript dates, I'm also aware that and I speak for for sort of from my own point of, of view um, and having interacted with people who want to go study abroad. Some of us, um, the primary reason for going to study abroad really isn't to study abroad, is to go there and maybe, you know, not come back until we have, <laughs> until, until we have, um, how do you say, um, sort of a residence permit and we can, you know, give ourselves and our families options. So the main goal is migration. So the main so goal say. is migration as opposed to, so the study route is just a way through migration. So in order to maybe help um, us and to, and to not miss it, um, if the transcripts are not available by a certain time, is no. there is there sort of the advice to maybe switch gears into something else? What would be like the plan B? Yeah, you know, yeah. That yeah. If it I got, happen, I got your point. Is, um, yeah, so. that happened last year actually to some of our applicants. That's why, as we're doing the follow up, once we see that. Um, it's about a few days, like let's say two days to the deadline. We call the applicant and ask for permission or if the applicant will opt for undergraduate instead. Um, since Sweden is not, um, they are not discriminating when it comes to age. So you can always switch to undergraduate and apply for an undergraduate but it's good to keep trying and trying until uh probably two few days to the deadline it's just a matter of uh uploading some of this document and i know okay thank you for the question anyways no issues can i ask one more just before we leave uh, uh, uh. After now, I won't ask any questions again, I promise. Um, Please, so we ask every question. Thank you. God bless you. <laughs> What's that? Chile <laughs> so is saying I should ask all the questions. I should go ahead and ask all the questions. Please, I'm that I won't without ask pleasure. <laughs> So, so again, some of us are just getting introduced to um, sort of how we how we can view our portal by ourselves and you know start to follow up. Um, and if you know, per venture, one week before we have to switch our gears into undergrad, right? Okay. Mm -hmm. um, do they have these options as well in undergrad where they can see the progress of of? Yeah, um, yeah, yeah, yeah. It's the same. Okay, so as soon as as soon as they have everything, they would they would then you know start to evaluate them and they know whether they're qualified or not. Yeah, yeah, they do that. But for undergrad, there are a lot of things that needs to be done as well. Like um, uh, um, you know, the the it's a different kind of application, so to say. So. Let me say, like one of them is the um, instead of the transcript, they need to. Uh, uh, what's one of them? I think uh -huh, they need the scratch card. They need to do some verification to verify the work or whatever the whole level. So it's that, that apart from all those ones, it's a different kind of application. But of course, they will also see. The progress once everything is is done. Okay, thank you. You're welcome. 
But you also mentioned something about somebody getting a work permit at the beginning of... Yeah, yeah, yeah. She, that's one of the students that is already here. She just said, good evening, sir. Quick question. I was given a renewal of my work contract. They said until... Yeah, she's just... That's just a testimony. <laughs> This is, oh, you can't see. This can't is see just, it. uh, yeah, this is just for one of the, I mean, the applicants last year. Yeah, she, 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 she's just like you guys last year and now she's in Sweden. So it's another level. I have, I have network of those that are here because the language will be different by the time you get here. Now, <laughs> What we're talking about now is the admission and all. For them, what they are talking about is how to network, to integrate into the system, to get work. So that's why somebody was asking me, I said, we are not, uh, we are not agents, to be sincere. No, it's not about agent. It's about making impacts, honestly, making impacts. Yeah, we're family. Uh, yeah, exactly. Students. Making impacts. We have, I have quite a number of them here. Like they call anytime. Oh, what do I do now? Somebody called me yesterday. A family that came, like four of them. The guy said he has spent a lot in the city where they are. And he called me, that, Mr. Daniel that they want to move to a bigger city because it's the wife that is studying and they have two kids. So he's saying I should look for apartment for them in this region like Stockholm Envir environs. So, you know, I'm happy to help them, you know, just, just help, making impact. Uh, those making impact in the life of those people, making impact, you know, that's just the goal, okay? It is well. So that's the work permit issue is just about uh, a lady, nothing, it's not something to discuss here now. But the good news is somebody got a job and is working on the work permit. Yeah. Or do you want more information about the work permit? <laughs> No, Mr. Dan. When we get to Sweden, we'll talk to you about that. Uh, yeah, yeah. I, I think that's the thing. That's the thing. It's about, it's something here. Yeah, I'm really tired now. So can we, I've been walking all day. All right. So any other questions of this? Oh, 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 oh. Hmm? Do we have any question? No question. Then um, thank you guys for joining today. And I wish you best in your application process. In case you want to private chat me, you can also do that within 15 minutes. Otherwise, I need to, to do something else. Thank you. Yeah, thank, thank you. you. Thank you, sir. We'll chat more. We'll chat later, yeah. sir. Yeah, bye. Mm, all right. Bye. Thank bye. you. Bye.